Well, there's that static again, huh? Oh, it's still there. It's, oh, it's Jesus. Back again. Yeah. Okay. All right. It's still wonder, there. All right. Mysterious. Um. Well, I, I have a. Oh, now it's gone. I mean, it's, it's gone. Like virt virtually gone. It just it virtually comes and gone. goes. You know, it's just now it's like really, really quiet, and it just comes and goes. When you mute your microphone, then you hear this like silence, like you're in a you know in a room with nobody, and and uh, as it is, it just sounds like a space kind of sound. You know, interesting. Bit. Okay, and yeah, I'm hearing none of it here. Let me see if I. Yeah, I still oh, can't really you... hear it. Are are you rustling papers or something? Because that's what no. it kind of sounds like. Okay, no. Mm. No, I'm not. I mean, I'm not. No. Nope. I don't have. That's what it sounds like. <laughs> That's what it did. It did for a That's moment. That's what it sounded like. Yeah. Okay. Um. All right. So maybe we have a secret guest, another guest somewhere out there who can like click the link and they're invisible and they're rustling papers. No, yeah. No, it just doesn't sound like rustling papers. It doesn't sound like anything. Is it gone? It like it just went away and then it comes back. It's like um. Okay. No, it just sounds like the kind of stuff that happens in a recording studio with a microphone. I mean, like every time I go to the studio, including when I recorded this album uh, last weekend, um, I mean, we spent the first two hours trying to figure out what was causing the static noises we were hearing and how to get rid of it. I mean, and this happens in this nice, fancy recording studio pretty much every time I'm there. There's always at least a couple hours spending, you know, spent trying to find what is causing the static, which chord we need to get rid of, which... Yeah which little device we need to blow air into and you know yeah yeah okay uh but it's still happening and it's so weird that i can't hear it like it's very i have my headphones on i i i don't know whenever there's been issues in the past i've always heard it but right, i i is, don't i don't hear anything so that's, that's which distressing evidence of possible it's russian involvement i blame the russians could be the iranians yeah, who knows? Who knows? Um, all right. So, well, why don't we do this? Because, I mean, we can't. Yeah, I, I don't I don't really know how to fix this in real time. Um, but I don't want to, you know, I mean, you can if you if you mute your mic when I'm talking, nobody will hear any static. OK, so why don't we do this? Why don't you um, how about we just kind of skip right to the album and you just kind of tell people uh, what the album is all about? Because, first of all, I, I love this album. Uh, everything I've listened to so far, say their names. And if you listen to this album and you don't have uh, and your eyes are dry as you listen to it, you might want to check your pulse. Uh, you really, you might want to check your pulse. I mean, I was, I was, I think almost every track I was, uh, I was uh, I was getting a little uh, loosey goosey in the <laughs> eyes, getting a little watery in the eyes for uh, pretty much every track I've listened to. Uh, it's a very powerful album, so uh, why don't you take it away and, and give people the lowdown with it? Well, it's basically um, basically a collection of thirteen of the songs that I've written over the past few months, mostly about uh, what's been going on in Portland and more broadly um, in the world. But yeah, that pretty much there might be one or two songs about historical events in there, but it's pretty much all uh, songs about uh, what's been happening uh, over the past few months. Um, I mean, in including uh, well, I, I did write a few songs that were on my last album before that since the killing of George Floyd. But this is the first album that's entirely made up of songs that have been happening you know, since the killing of George Floyd and since the uprising. And uh, that's you know mostly what they are related to specifically events in Portland, like, you know, Trump calling Portland an anarchist jurisdiction and the so-called progressive mayor of Portland being a massive fan of excessive police brutality and tear gas use and, yeah, and, and Portland being the most rent burdened city in the country. I mean, it's, uh, and, and the, the, and of course the, uh, you know the place that gets all the attention it's not that there haven't been protests going on in lots of other cities on a daily basis uh, since the end of may but portland uh certainly has gotten um gotten the attention for whatever particular reason i mean that seems like it's convenient for the 
for the for Fox and for Trump because there's uh, you know the number of vegans per capita or something make Portland look stupider in their eyes or something I don't know what they you know exactly why they choose Portland as opposed to Oakland or Minneapolis or any number of cities that have ongoing constant you know protests since the end of May Seattle New York you know but Portland they like Portland they like picking on Portland <laughs> I don't know exactly what explains it. So, will you play a song for us? I would happily play a song for you. Um, but uh, <clears throat> I'll play um, I'll play one of the songs I I wrote uh, since recording the album because anybody who wants to hear the album can just hear the album. It's on Bandcamp for free. <laughs> But this is um, October 12th. This is Indigenous Peoples Day. It's known in some places as Columbus Day. And it's 170 years this month uh, that um, the, uh, the laws were passed um, uh, that, pri that, that, that predate the, um, the Homestead Act of 1862. There were a bunch of different things that, were, that predate that massive uh, act uh, law that changed so much of the West of this country. And, um, but the, the, law, the, the Land Claims Act, I think it was called, um, that prior to uh, Oregon becoming a state was passed that um, basically gave away uh, the state uh, to anybody who was white enough to uh, take it. When this fertile valley was stolen was a process assisted by an epidemic that wiped off the earth most any who might have resisted. The land was parceled and given away to any brave pioneer who was white enough to own property around here. When this fertile valley was stolen it sealed so many a fate Who'd no longer live by a trading post But in a stratified settler state With a white landed gentry created By colonial decree We're not talking about the Bible But a few generations of history this fertile valley was stolen It was easy to foresee That so many, many years later There'd still be a white majority It was engineered from the day The exclusion laws were made Any pretense of inclusion since Has been a sick charade This fertile valley was stolen The pioneers were given their farms Which were defended from the displaced by force of arms And by dint of reason As false as any that could be Enforced by laws and customs Called white supremacy this fertile valley was stolen A process was set forth To make another bastion of capitalism To the west and north A freshly conquered California Arizona and the rest Of the disease and theft and slaughter When the pioneers went west when this fertile valley was stolen. That was awesome.
Thank you. That was awesome and very appropriate. Is the static still there, by the way? Now it's gone. Oh, it's now gone? It gone? I don't hear anything. Now. No, of course, shit. it might come back any second now, but yeah, at it... the moment, it is gone. Wow. I mean, it is, it is, it is. There, no, I mean, gone maybe. It's, it's like, it's like at 2%. It's really, really oh, okay. much. okay. So much, it's, it's still it's there, there, but it's, but it's really it's... quiet. Yeah. All it's right. like a gentle, a gen- gentle wind. It's like a sea breeze at this point. Sea breeze. Yeah, I, I, yeah. yeah, I appreciate you uh, being a sport through all this and, and rolling with me through this. This is a first. Um, we have had everything thrown in our path a- as far as this show is concerned. There have been shows where YouTube would just randomly change settings. There have been shows where the show wasn't even public and I didn't know it. There have been shows where yeah. the chat has randomly been disabled and I didn't know it. Um, and That's now, what's happening with me lately. The chat, yeah. I can't see the chat. And I've been trying to work out why it's happening and getting on help with StreamYard and stuff. And I don't know what's going on. But yeah, I mean, there's, there's been something. every tech issue and then some with this show. I, I, I mean, sometimes I, I feel like I'm insane for continuing to do it. But, <laughs> but you know, what are you going to do? Um, and this is another one. We, I, I mean, I guess now there's a mic issue and I have to fix this. And, um, but yep. um, we are here. Can I make a little request? Of course. Um, oh, dude. All right. So a song it that really I... It really does sound fine, too, by the way. I mean, we oh, can, it does? I think I would say just proceed. You know, really, it's not... It's a very low level static. I don't know why it's so much less than it was, but who knows? It's, it's weird. Maybe low. it's slowly. Maybe it's slowly just <laughs> it's exiting. Um, it's just, the mic needed to be worked a bit. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I think I'll, I'll take it apart and put it back together and, and see where we're at. Not like literally take the mic apart, but, you know, like I'll, I'll take the Chaotica eyeball off and then kind of, yeah, maybe it just needs a little bit of a dusting. I mean, my cat does jump around up on the desk and stuff. So maybe that has something to do with it. But um, I, I don't actually own one, but I hear that those little things that blow air, you know, that little things that, you know, people in electronics or camera stores, they have those little rubber things you squeeze and it blows air. And those I think that can solve like, you know, half of the problems that people have with their computers can be solved by restarting the computer. And I think half of your problems with electronic devices can be solved by blowing air in them. But yeah, that's, yeah. You know, maybe just that's the only things I know what to do. So so when I have a problem, if, if it, it, that either fixes it or I take it somewhere. But <laughs> you're, you're you're the um, you're the original Nintendo school of fixing, like blow air into it. Blow air. Blow do you air, remember restart, that? give up. <laughs> yeah. no, I, don't know. That, I remember doing that with uh because those devices would always overheat those old you know well i still want to make my request um every yeah. day every day every day and I, I kid you not one of the songs i listen to there's a couple songs i'm listening to daily at this point to really just help me keep going and, and or give me like the motivation to just be like yeah we're still in this fight one of those is your song landlord so uh, is there any way you'd be willing to play Landlord for us? Oh, sure. What yes! The heck? Yeah, I'll just uh, find it here because it's, it's too wordy. I don't remember. <clears throat> but, Such um, a cool guitar lick. Oh, thank one you. Of my, one of my favorite, like, like just like aggressive folk guitar licks. Uh, such a powerful song. One of, my, one of my favorite songs by you. Maybe if I had to pick just one, I might have to say it's my favorite song by you. And um, and yeah, I listen to that song every day. That is a it's I'm so glad to hear that it has that potential therapeutic application. It does. It, and for <laughs> anyone who's not familiar with it, you're going to think, yeah, this song's really pertinent to the contemporary moment we're living in right now. And it really is, because in terms of like um, the kind of stuff that we're doing in terms of organizing around the rent strike and st- and and eviction defense, is I mean, so much of the organizing that's going on, you know, you were mentioning the organizing and uh, around that, and so much of it is is not necessarily actions to deal with specifically what's happening now, but it's more about building forces for when the tsunami of evictions comes and then being able to respond quickly in the form of def- of uh, eviction defense squads rapid uh, response squads because we can't be like camping out in front of every building that's where the, you know people are facing eviction but we can apply the same principles that they used in upstate new york in the 1850s the same basic strategies and uh, and that can be applied here except you know we don't need 
to blow on horns. We can uh, uh, send text messages, but, you know, and other forms of, you know, getting the word out. There's other things uh, that work better than actual bullhorns, but um, in the modern age, probably. came from Holland to America became landlords where none had been before soon one man owned half a million acres on both sides of the Hudson River shore he invited families to move in and give him 30 percent of everything they grew every year this is how they'd pay the rent his name was Van Rensselaer he became one of the richest men on earth. In today's terms, $90 billion is how much he'd be worth. All this for doing nothing, but saying all of this was his. I have the power of the state behind me, and I'm in the landlord biz. After 200 years of this, and one revolution won. Another Van Rensselaer had another son And this Rensselaer was greedier than his ancestors dead and past It was now the 1840s and things were changing fast It was the straw that broke the back The bottle was uncorked They started organizing meetings the tenant farmers of New York. They found the strength of numbers. They found the power of suggestion. They found each other asking the same question. Who gave you the right to be a landlord? To live a life of ease while others toil? Who gave you the right to be a rich man? While the rest of us pay you so we can work this soil? They vowed they would stop this rent collection. They vowed they'd bring this madness to an end. And when one blew the tin horn of distress, they soon found they'd have a thousand friends dressed in calico skirts with masks upon their faces on horseback armed with knives and guns. They chanted and they yelled. They kept their farms and they kept the sheriffs on the run. They asked, who gave you the right to be a landlord? To live a life of ease while others toil Who gave you the right to be a rich man While the rest of us pay you so we can work this soil The governor's militias tried to stop them But nothing could be done to break their will and by 1848, the landlords buckled, sold their holdings to the farmers in the hills. Yes, they overthrew this feudal system, but it's replaced now by speculators and banks. And you can still hear the homeless families asking of all the landed gentry in our ranks. Who gave you the right to be a landlord? To live a life of ease while others toil? Who gave you the right to be a rich man? While the rest of us pay you so we can work this soil Who gave you the right to be a landlord? To live a life of ease while others toil Who gave you the right to be a rich man? While the rest of us pay you so we can work this soil Who gave you the right? Dude, yes! Yeah! I love that song. <laughs> I listen to that song every day uh including today Excellent. clearly uh is is it still there is the thing oh, still the there static? oh so quiet i it, had to i had yes, to, i there. had to listen for a moment to see if it was still there <laughs> it's very quiet i still don't like, <laughs> i can't hear it everything sounds normal to me I, this is the weirdest i'm glad that if this had to happen which which i feel like every every single issue known to man has to happen to this show and uh i don't have an executive producer i'm just a one-man shop uh, so I'm just, uh, you know, I just roll with it.
But yeah, uh, if this I had to how. happen, I'm glad at least you're the guest if this had to happen, because at least I could be like, well, do you want to play music for us to like still make this a show? Uh, and so, I'm also uh, used, used to being my own producer for shows with technical issues. So that's no very, kid. very familiar. Very familiar. Well, that being said, I got five more requests. I made, I was making a list. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no problem. I'm I mean, I'd be your... down for it, but I don't want to make you. <laughs> I'm happy, happy to do it. Happy to sing or talk. Absolutely. Great. No great, great, great. Uh, well, let's talk a little bit about the new record. And then, uh, of course, you're welcome to play a few more songs um, <laughs> to kind of make uh, make lemonade out of lemons here with my uh, weird static that I can't hear <laughs> that's plaguing our show today. Um, you know, in your music and this particular album, you basically it's a history lesson through music. And this album in particular, I mean, um, you talk so much. Elijah McClain is talked about on this album. Say their names. Uh, you mentioned Howard Zinn. Um, and, you know, it's interesting. I was talking earlier this summer. I had lunch with Howard Zinn's son. I was hmm. uh, I was in the town that he lives in. I reached out and, and he knew who I was. So we met up and we had lunch. And uh, I didn't want to make the entire conversation about his father, but I, but I did, you know, obviously I wanted to ask a couple questions and he was gracious about it. He let me ask. And um, I said, like, what is your dad? Like, what was your dad's biggest butting of heads in his professional life? And he told me that so often his dad just had a butting of the heads over the basic notion of what is history. And as discouraging as it is to come to terms with, even in a place like academia, there's this notion that history is only written by the winners and only written by the powerful. And Howard Zinn was one of the people who decided that wasn't acceptable and history belongs to everybody. Yeah, <clears throat> and he's actually, I mean... It, it's been um, really quite something with how his uh, work has, uh, along with other historians, has become, I mean, in particular, his work has become sort of not exactly mainstream, but certainly, I mean, his uh, A People's History of the United States sold more than a million copies. It took a long time to sell more than a million copies, but it is used in, in a lot of schools around the country, but it's not used in a lot of other schools. And of course, you know, Donald Trump had his American History Conference at the White House Conference on Amer on American History, where he had, as, as the main featured guest was somebody, I don't remember the person's name, but apparently they travel around the country basically dissing Howard Zinn and and, um, and uh, you know, criticizing um, any uh, efforts at uh, teaching about history in ways that acknowledge and really uh, delve into things like uh, slavery, genocide, land theft, real estate speculation, robber barons, the extreme divisions of rich and poor, the militant labor movement, police massacring workers on a regular routine basis, all these kinds of things that are clearly part of uh, such a big part of history and why anything ever happens uh, in, in terms of the development of history, which is a history of the conflict between the haves and the have-nots, if you're going to, you know, put it in in one uh, easy, sum, summed up sentence. I mean, that's what history is, basically. That's what makes history. Uh, that's what makes history happen over the course of the past few thousand years, for sure. But um, you know, you talk about that, and then you're you're a subversive. And of course, if you use you know, and, and Howard Zinn is is the chief uh, subversive among uh, sort of history teachers in the past. You know, in my lifetime, because he's a very very great great writer, and and he and he wrote the you know for whatever combination of reasons, you know, greatness and whatever else. You know, he wrote the book that that really stuck and and really became the book. Uh, I mean, there are other fantastic uh, histories of the country that are, uh, you know, that that are, I would say, you know, in many ways just as good. Um, <clears throat> but he wrote the book that uh, really stuck, and and he's he's been getting the he's been the sort of the brunt of the criticism against uh, teaching uh, more r reality based and less jingoistic patriotic versions of history, and then. Um, 
so um, like uh, actually probably half the songs on the album, they, it, they, you know, it was just written after uh, Trump uh, gave a speech or held a conference. That was uh, written. That song was written after he held his American History conference, and then a few days. Either a few days before that or a few days after that is when he uh, officially, when Barr, Attorney General Barr, officially uh, classified Portland, Seattle, and New York City as anarchist jurisdictions, and that's when I wrote the song Anarchist Jurisdiction. So the songs do not appear in chronological order on the album. It's more uh, sort of musical order that worked well musically. But Do you have hope for the future and... If so, where do you get it from? I mean, I mean, you have children, you have, I, I mean, you have a lot of reasons to, um, you know, really want, really want to keep going and trying to win this thing. So where do you kind of get your hope from, if you have it? I think, um, I mean, I do. I mean, I, I, I completely sympathize and understand, uh, you know, where I think, where people are coming from who, who don't have hope. And I, and I, I, you know, I have to say I, I respect their positions, you know, but uh, in, including some very prominent, intelligent people, you know, and, and, and not, you know, but uh, but I do have hope, and and it's uh, it, but it's it's not necessarily hope that we can fix all the problems, uh, but hope that uh, th that social movements can accomplish great things and can fix a lot of problems, and that in the course of social movements doing that, they can also uh, inadvertently uh, sort of create. A, an amazing a community that takes care of a lot of other problems w without that being their in, the intent, you know, because one of the problems is hopelessness and depression and anxiety and being part of a social movement that is well-organized and big and militant and inclusive uh, it takes care of a lot of those problems with uh, uh, those emotional and, and mental problems that are so common uh, in society uh, anytime and especially now. So I think uh, social movement, can. Uh, there's a lot of things to be hopeful about in terms of social movements helping with a lot of those basic uh, problems that people are having in terms of just day-to-day -day functioning. Uh, but also a um, big part of our problem in, in this society with the t pandemic and with institutional racism and with the extreme divisions uh, in, the, in so many ways. I think it really it really comes down to it in so many ways to capitalism or if it doesn't come down to capitalism ca dealing with that problem will will cause the other problems to become much easier to deal with and and much less of a big deal. For example, um like uh, whether or not white people uh, can overcome overcome their uh, internal uh, biases against uh, people of color, or whether or not uh, any, uh, men can uh, overcome their biases uh, towards women, or any number of other um, very important problems in our uh, societies around bias. Uh, if everybody has um, affordable housing, universal health care, uh, universal basic income, uh, then the, those other social, the other problems become much, much more uh, approachable, much easier to deal with. Like if we were talking about <clears throat> just the internal biases of the police, for example, that would be one thing. But we're talking about them enforcing uh, the law and the law that rich people must stay rich and poor people must get evicted. And uh, that's um, that's the problem. It's it's not so much the problem that they have this internal bias. It's that they develop these internal biases because they're enforcing racist laws, you know. And uh, so which is a cap phenomenon of capitalism the racist laws i mean this is a this is a fundamental uh, aspect of our uh, capitalist system uh, there is no such thing as the fantasy of uh, the free market capitalism that you know that the that the you know the anarcho capitalists or whoever fantasize about in their in their um, you know theoretical dreams you know the reality of capitalism is it's uh, it's big wealthy people and corporations who bribe governments and bribe other entities to make them do what they want and they call that democracy and uh, in and part of how they carry out their system of of bribery is through con through tactics of divide and conquer of the population and uh, the uh, apartheid in the United States and prior to that slavery and 
also uh, the the system of of settlement involving uh, white supremacy uh, being your 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 t land title being your white skin, etc. I mean, this is all built into our version of the capitalism system, but it's also not unique uh, to the United States. Capitalism, wherever you find it, uh, engages in in these kinds of uh, in this kind of corruption, this kind of divide and conquer, in this kind of buying of governments in order to get them to do their bidding, and then blaming them for all the problems in society when when uh, you know everything goes as planned. Uh, but uh, yeah, I don't know where that was going, but there's. <laughs> I'm with you though. I'm I'm totally with you. Is the static still there? I take it it's still there. No, actually, is it now? Now is it gone completely? I think the warmer your mic gets, the less the static. Uh, you know, I don't know. Really? <clears throat> but it, now it's um, no, it's I'm not checking completely the chats. Gone. It's not okay. Yeah, I, mean, it's I hear just... I hear what sounds more like just that you're in a room. You know that I'm not alone anymore when you turn your mic on. So it's hard to say, but it's okay. I wouldn't, I'm not sure. I'd, I, I'd even call this static at this point. It's something like. Yeah, maybe. Very, very fun. <sighs> yeah, okay. Uh <laughs> fun times. It's just it's just our third guest today, really. Um it's funny, as soon as I unmute my mic, the uh <laughs> the numbers go down on the show. <laughs> but the cool thing is, the cool thing is is the people that are sticking this out, they know that they're getting rewards because the way we're navigating through the tech issues today is that you're doing these awesome songs. Uh, do you want to play one more for us? Oh, sure. Let's Dealer's see. Choice, whatever you want to play. I mean, I, I, if you want some requests, I, I, I could throw plenty at you, but, but it's, uh, it's, uh, I'll let you choose. Well, I could. I am happy to take requests, but I could do... Let's see. I could do something I just wrote or something... Uh... Do you want to do something oh, off the album, or do you just want to like yeah. push people to it? I could do I could do something off the album, and maybe um, <clears throat> how about um, I'll do this one. Uh, there's um, because so, last night uh, today, as 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 we mentioned, is Indigenous Peoples Day, and um, last night uh, there was an Indigenous led march in uh, town that in portland that um in involved chains and uh the um toppling of one statue of abraham lincoln and one statue of theodore roosevelt and um and i uh, just for for those out there that might need any uh reminder of of why uh um indigenous people would want to st uh, topple a statue of Abraham Lincoln. Among his other accomplishments, uh, Abraham Lincoln ordered the biggest mass execution in U.S. history of 38 uh, Dakota, uh, M Mendota Indians um, in Minnesota. Um, of course, he's remembered for other things. Um, Theodore Roosevelt requires a bit less uh, explanation for anybody uh, familiar with um, the history of manifest destiny but um in uh in australia the history is so similar and uh and a friend of mine there um uh recently um it's it's kind of almost uh, hard to believe but it, this is when we're, and we're talking about a, a, a sort of a, a you know, middle-aged uh, white guy um, who, who I can't say he looks too too respectable you know he, he looks like kind of disheveled uh, hippie uh, but he gets arrested constantly for uh, nothing more than using craft glue Elmer's glue it, it dissolves in water right to uh, to stick a piece of paper to a statue in Sydney, Australia, which merely quotes the person who the statue is of, who was the first governor of New South Wales, a guy named Lachlan Macquarie. Lachlan Macquarie was a Scotsman who signed up to serve the British crown. 
He traveled around the world to America. Not long after that, he headed down to his post in New South Wales to be the governor to expand colonial rule. Half of Sydney was named after him. Everybody learns his name in school. Just don't put Macquarie's words beneath his statue. If you do, his defenders might arrest you. Lachlan Macquarie was a governor who opened schools and hospitals. His aim was to civilize a nation in the interests of himself and capital. He was a raging alcoholic and a bad businessman, but you could say he did his best to broaden the global dominion of a project they call the Christian West. Just don't put Macquarie's words beneath his statue. If you do, his defenders might arrest you. Lachlan Macquarie stole children from their parents and never gave them back. And when Gundagara and Darawal people resisted, he ordered his soldiers to attack. He said, make the Aborigines your prisoners. Shoot them and hang them from the trees. So as to strike fear in the surviving natives in order to bring them to their knees. Yes, don't put Macquarie's words beneath his statue. If you do, his defenders might arrest him. Lachlan Macquarie was a Scotsman who signed up to serve the British crown. He traveled around the world to America. Not long after that, he headed down to his post in New South Wales to be the governor to expand colonial rule. Half of Sydney was named after him. Everybody learns his name in school. That was awesome. That was awesome. Hey, everybody, it's Static Magoo here with my guest, David Robix. And uh, <laughs> that's awesome. Again, just like, ah, uh, and it is Indigenous People's Day. Um, you know, it's funny. I'm, I'm an Italian-American, and uh, I always tweet about, you know, Christopher Columbus on this day and, uh, you know, how awful Christopher Columbus was and how happy I am that in a lot of parts of the country it's not Columbus Day anymore and, and how great it is. And I inevitably get... I inevitably get someone that's always like, oh, Placone's your last name. You must be a self-hating. And I'm like, why do you, would you do that to like any, do you go up to German Americans and be like, hey, are you a fan of Hitler? No, I'm not. Oh, you, you, you hate yourself then. Like, yeah. it's like, that makes zero same, sense. Same it makes logic. no sense. And yeah. first of all, he might not have even been Italian, by the way, just for a re they're not really sure what his origin actually was. They don't actually know. Like they think oh, it was right? Genoa. Yeah, they don't know for sure. Like, like it, it was likely Genoa, but they don't even know that for sure. And so, yeah. They anyway. know it was it was the Spanish crown that commissioned him to go. Yes. Uh, in any case, for sure. We know that, but they think like his origin could have been Portuguese. Like they don't know 100% for certain. So so it's just funny. I mean, I, I, I just bring that up because I woke up to one of those tweets today where someone was like, you're a self-hating Italian-American. And I'm like. That makes no sense what you just said. None whatsoever. But but you um, know, another really f fascinating little twist on that bit of history of when when Columbus or Colombo, as his actual name was, when he set uh, forth and, and uh, was traveling across the Mediterranean to head towards the Americas. He actually had to uh, take un, uh, uncommonly used uh, routes uh, to get across the Mediterranean because all the normal uh, routes for the boats were, were clogged with uh, Ottoman Navy ships full of Spanish Jews that they were rescuing. So, um, first of all, now let's uh, let me get to a supple, couple super chats here and. Uh, Let's do this first. Melissa says, David, still want you to come to Bristol, Vermont someday. 
Have oh, you ever? I'd love to come to Bristol. Yeah, I, I, I've never been to Bristol. I don't remember if I have. I don't. I, I, I know Bristol, England. I'm not sure if I've been to Bristol, Vermont. But sometimes these towns are like uh, you know really really small. Because I mean, was it England it or Vermont? I can't town. remember. If it's Vermont, then uh, you know. I mean, there's only like really three s- sort of towns that that can pass as cities, or that they usually call cities in Vermont, and and Bristol is definitely not one of them. But but I'd love to go to Bristol. So, uh, and Melissa owns a uh, a book and music shop. I'm pretty oh, sure. Excellent. Red Pill also says music Monday love peace and love from Antifa rock on. Thank you so much for that, Red Pill. And Jonas, here's the, here's a great uh, compliment, and then we're gonna get to uh, you're gonna tell everyone where that where they can find the uh, the album. Jonas says, "Are you just that good at picking guests, or do you happen to know so many awesome people?" <laughs> oh, I love those kinds of comments. <laughs> I do too. Thank you so much, Jonas. I appreciate that very much. And and uh, yeah, I'm a I'm a very lucky guy that really cool people are willing to do this show, and and I try to mix it up. I like to have. Um, everything from activists to musicians to authors to uh, folks, grassroots candidates running for office to fellow comedians. I try to mix it up. It keeps it fun for me. And yeah, again, if I'm going to have goofy audio issues today, which some people are, it's can you gone. hear it? It's yeah, gone. some no, people it's, are saying it's, it's gone. gone. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. Gone. We, we fought mean... through it. We, we fought through it. Uh, so yeah, so sorry about that today. But David was the best guest to have in a situation like this because I could just be like, you know what? Take it away and play your amazing music because some people might not know uh, how good this music is. They might not know your music. So now they do. Um, So, man, I will be so bold as to make a second request. Is there any way? uh, First of all, tell everyone where they can find the album and plug all your stuff. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I created a page for the album even. So davidrovics.com slash say their names. And then there's extra uh, material in addition to the album, like songs related to the album that aren't on the album because they were before from before. Songs so you, related to other names of other people. Uh, so go to David davidrovics.bandcamp.com and you can look up the album directly, say their names. It's an amazing album. I highly recommend checking it out. And, um, and I'll tell you this, this can be the get your news on with Ron challenge. If you listen to that album and you don't cry at any point, like, like nothing makes you cry and you listen to that. And I mean this in a good way, because that's how powerful the songs are. If you listen to that album and you don't cry, email me and I will mail you a free pulse because that's what you need. Apparently, <laughs> I, I will I will mail you a freaking heart because you must be the Tin Man from Oz where you need a heart if you listen to that album and you don't cry because it's that powerful of an album. Uh, so please go check it out. Uh, davidrovics.bandcamp.com is, again, where you can go to find the album. The album is Say Their Names. Uh, David, uh, is there something you want to send us off with? And well, uh, Since one of the folks who commented uh, is named Red Pill, uh, I have a song for that person. Nice. And... Uh, can I make a small request? Yeah. Is there any way after that you'd be willing to send us off with St. Patrick's Battalion? Oh, hell yeah. Yes! Oh! Actually, they're in the same key, so we, this could be like a medley, but it's oh, kind of weird. weird oh, medley. little did I know. <laughs> All right, so I, yeah. I think the lesson to be learned here, everybody watching, if you're if you're tuning into a show and there's tech issues... Stick around because you might be rewarded. Stick around because it might freaking work out. It might just work out. That's good advice for sure. It's the lesson sure. I learned today. I was like, what should we do? And I'm like, ah, we can we can figure this out. Yeah, it was only bad for the first minute or two. It made for some great conversation, I think. <laughs> well, I got you to play a bunch more songs. I mean, I was like, like off mic, I was like, oh, maybe you'll play one or two if you're up for it. Now it's just like, dude, do a show. Hell yeah. <laughs> you haven't been able to tour all year. I've been able to no, tour exactly. all year. We all miss this. <laughs> exactly. Right. I mean, this is the closest it gets to uh, to actually performing, you know, uh, yeah, conversations with one person on the Internet with where, where you can imagine that there's an audience out there, of course. As the host, you might be looking at a number. My StreamYard account stopped showing me the number, too. I know they're watching, but I can't see until afterwards. <laughs> you know, when, when you've been playing, I've actually just been rocking out and singing along. I, I'm, I'm on mute while I sing along. I am actually singing along, but I put myself on mute. 
uh for the out of consideration for everybody else quite well, frankly but uh feel free to sing along although there might be like a two second delay or no it was right well seconds, of course that's why yeah. oh yeah totally but uh <laughs> so I, I probably just look like a big geek but you know whatever i don't care i'm having a good time well we're now going to do a, a try a medley of um going moving from the matrix to saint bastard battalion they are both in the same in the same key and both in waltz time so it just uh somehow is going to work i think Perfect. Maybe a little too well. Maybe they're they're almost the same song. That could be the problem. But uh, <laughs> everybody will realize. So he only has like three different types of songs he writes, and this is like type three. You know? <laughs> Here in the Matrix, we're trained our whole lives to obey. Get up when the alarm goes off in the morning and go to work each day. You can eat three meals. You just might have to trade in your free will. You don't have to be captured by aliens for reality to be such a bitter pill. Here in the Matrix, the men in the ivory towers say we can remake the world around us if we put in the hours if we work hard and play by the rules it may not be true but still the fantasy is nicer when reality is such a bitter pill here in the matrix People argue about TV Sometimes they complain about not enough Diversity among the talking heads provided By the people mill While we're hooked up to their machines Where reality is such a bitter pill Here in the Matrix People talk about being aware They'll critique you for dropping some litter Or for not washing your hair And if you talk of launching a revolution They'll say that you should be killed You gotta work within the system They'll say, yes, reality is such a bitter pill Here in the Matrix they say the problems that exist can all be solved by means provided if we politely persist. Work in your offices, vote in your booths for the men on the hill. Just ignore your nightmares about those creatures because reality is such a bitter pill. My name is John Riley. I'll have your ear only a while. I left my dear home in Ireland. It was death, starvation, or exile. When I got to America, it was my duty to go. Enter the army and slog across Texas to join in the war against Mexico. And it was there in the pueblos and hillsides that I saw the mistake I had made. Part of a conquering army with the morals of a bayonet blade. And there amidst all these poor dying Catholics, screaming children, the burning stench of it all, myself and 200 Irishmen decided to rise to the call. From Dublin City to San Diego, we witnessed freedom denied. So we formed the St. Patrick Battalion and we fought on the Mexican side. We formed the St. Patrick Battalion and we fought on the Mexican side. Fought them. Well, we, uh, we marched neath the green flag of St. Patrick and blazed with Erin Golbra. Right with the harp and the shamrock and the Bertad para la Republica. Just 50 years after Wolf Tone, 5,000 miles away, the Yanks called us a legion of strangers, and they can talk as they may. But from Dublin City to San Diego, we witnessed freedom denied. 
So we formed the St. Patrick Battalion, and we fought on the Mexican side. We formed the St. Patrick Battalion, and we fought on the Mexican side. We fought them in five major battles. Churubusco was the last. Overwhelmed by the cannons from Boston, we fell after each mortar blast. Most of us died on that hillside in the service of the Mexican state. So far from our occupied homeland, we were heroes and victims of fate. From Dublin City to San Diego, we witnessed freedom denied. So we formed the St. Patrick Battalion and we fought on the Mexican side. From Dublin City to San Diego, we witnessed freedom denied. So we formed the St. Patrick Battalion and we fought on the Mexican side. We formed the St. Patrick Battalion and we fought on the Mexican side. It's amazing. That was amazing. Doesn't get much. I love that song. One of my favorite songs. Thank you for doing Thank that. You. Everybody check it out. DavidRovix.bandcamp.com. Uh, David, thanks so much for doing the show today. Thank you so, so much for bearing through oh, the tech so issues. Uh, I, I'm so glad we made uh, we made lemonade out of lemons there. I hope you come back you. Um, uh, again and, and we'll have a more uh, just uh, regular conversation when I'm not worried about the status of my mic. But of course, you will be welcome to play as many songs as you want. <laughs> and I'll just note to, your, what are, I'll note to your viewers that I will be having you in, as a guest on my show, Discussions with David, next month on That's my right. YouTube channel, which was entirely inspired by your uh, show. And I just uh, don't know why I thought if Ron could do it, I can too, but. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> That's what I like. That's what I want. That's what I want. <laughs> Get your news on with Ron. Don't you want to know what's going on? We're getting our news on today. Get your news on with Ron. Don't you want to know what's going on? Together and 